हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू दी सेवेंथ लेक्चर ऑफ द कोर्स ऑन मैकेनिक्स ऑफ मशीनिंग टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट स्ट्रेंस एंड स्ट्रेसेज इन आर्थोगोनल कटिंग इन द लास्ट लेक्चर आई डेवलप द फोर्स रिलेशनशिप्स इन आर्थोगोनल कटिंग फोर्सेज आर इम्पॉर्टेंट बिकॉज इफ यू नो दी हाउ मच इज द कटिंग फोर्स देन यू कैन डिसाइड अबाउट दी पावर ऑफ द मोटर बिकॉज कटिंग फोर्स मल्टीप्लाइड बाई दी वेलास्टी कैन गिव यू दी पावर ऑफ दी कटिंग देन यू मे गेट थर्स्ट फोर्स थर्स्ट फोर्स इज ऑल्सो नीडेड बिकॉज इफ यू नो दैट हाउ मच फोर्स इज कमिंग ऑन दी मशीन स्ट्रक्चर देन यू कैन डिजाइन इट अकॉर्डिंगली बट दी फोर्सेज आर नॉट दी ओनली थिंग वी नीड टू फाइंड आउट दी स्ट्रेसेज एंड स्ट्रेंस स्ट्रेसेज गिव दी आइडिया अबाउट दी रिलेटिव इंटेंसिटी ऑफ दी फोर्स फोर्स डिवाइडेड बाई एरिया इज दी स्ट्रेस समटाइम्स दी फोर्स मे बी वेरी हाई बट इफ दी एरिया इज टू लार्ज दैट मीन्स स्ट्रेस इज नॉट मच एंड समटाइम्स दी फोर्स मे अपीयर टू बी वेरी स्मॉल बट दी एरिया इज सो स्मॉल दैट दी स्ट्रेस विल बी वेरी हाई सो स्ट्रेसेज आर नीडेड फॉर डिजाइनिंग नाउ दे आर आर फोर्सेज एक्टिंग ऑन दी कटिंग टूल इन दैट केस देर विल बी स्ट्रेसेज जनरेटेड ऑन दी कटिंग टूल दीज स्ट्रेसेज वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट सिमिलरली स्ट्रेंस स्ट्रेंस आर सो यू यू सम आइडिया अबाउट द डिफॉर्मेशन दे गिव द आइडिया अबाउट द रिलेटिव डिफॉर्मेशन दैट इज वाई स्ट्रेंस एंड स्ट्रेसेज आर इम्पॉर्टेंट इन मशीनिंग ऑपरेशन सो वी विल डिस्कस स्ट्रेंस एंड स्ट्रेसेज इन आर्थोगल कटिंग फर्स्ट बेस्ड ऑन दी सिंगल सीयर प्लेन मॉडल वेयर वी एज्यूम दैट देयर इज ए सीयर प्लेन दैट इज दिस इज सपोज ओ पी पी ओ पी इज ए सीयर प्लेन आर दो देयर मे बी सीयर जोन इन फैक्ट एंड स्ट्रेसेज आर स्ट्रेंस डू नॉट राइज एब्रप्टी बट हियर इट इन दिस टाइप ऑफ मॉडल we have to assume that suppose at this location there is no strain and variation similarly here there is no strain variation but suddenly across the shear plane there is a huge amount of strain variation that type of thing we have to assume so let us again see the orthogonal cutting in which there is a tool and there is a job here now it is uh, uh, we assume that the job is moving at a velocity v and tool is stationary so there is a relative motion cutting speed is v then the material here it is compressed and because of compression and other components of the stresses you generate shear stress also we assume that the shearing is taking place along that op so in the op this plane the material is getting sheared and in this situation there is a shear force fs acting here and then there is a normal force fn that is uh, also acting on this that normal force fn is also acting on this shear plane this is the uh, plane in which there is a maximum shear stress and there is a normal one which can be also called it is a hydrostatic stress basically it is a pressure and the phi is the shear angle phi is the shear angle as usual merchants analysis you have studied and then this one is the rake angle that means tool rake face is inclined with the vertical di direction so this is alpha and machining is taking place here now coefficient of friction between two sliding surfaces means sliding surfaces means chip and tool so this one is actually mu is equal to tan lambda where lambda is called the friction angle and this is f by n f is the frictional force and n is the normal force acting on that point resultant is r this normal makes angle uh, lambda with the r r r makes angle lambda with n this is called friction angle so f by n and we have already told you by merchants 
analysis f can be expressed as f c sin alpha where f c is the horizontal cutting force that means in this figure it is horizontal that means f c is the force which is in the direction of the cutting velocity. So, that is what that this is f c is in the direction of cutting velocity and f t is the perpendicular direction in this figure it is vertical. So, f c sin alpha plus f t cos alpha that is f and n will be f c cos alpha minus f t sin alpha f c cos alpha minus f t sin alpha. You can see that f is the resistance that means frictional resistance on the tool and that is proportional to means it is linearly related to f c and also it is related to if f t also increases then also this component is going to increase whereas the normal force acting on the tool in this case if f c is increases then the normal component increases, but if f t increases then the normal component decreases. So, it is assumed that the forces f and r n are uniformly distributed over the entire chip tool contact area. Actually in practice this is not true, you may have more amount of the normal force in this particular area near the this side and then after that gradually it may decrease. But we are assuming that in this analysis that it is uniform and it is uh, there is no variation of the normal component or there is no variation of uh, other component here. So, this uh, assumption has to be uh, followed here. So, we can get only uh, stresses in an average sense. So, let us see that actual distribution of shear and normal stresses on the rake face of the tool is probably of the form shown in this figure. So, this is suppose tool in this you have got normal stress. So, at the point A that means at the this uh, just at the nose there is a maximum amount of the normal stress and after that normal stress keeps on decreasing at some point then it becomes 0 that means the chip has separated. If there is no normal uh, force there that means chip cannot remain in contact chip gets separated at point D up to from A to D chip is in contact. So, at D contact has condition is that contact has separated that means this is the point D and uh, this is uh, normal stress variation more or less it looks like a parabolic type of distribution. As far as the shear stress is concerned in this particular up to point C it is a sticking region that means chip gets stuck to the uh, tool and in this there is a constant shear stress. In this region no longer the Coulomb's law of uh, friction is valid. But after that there is a sliding region in which this chip is sliding properly and in this region that uh, shear stress keeps on decreasing with the normal stress. In this region we can say more or less Coulomb's law of friction may be holding. So, that is what we have got shear stress region uh, constant shear stress region and then after that we have got sliding region in which the shear stress may be proportional to normal stress. So, from the tool tip to some point C the normal stress is very high it is because suppose the normal stress is very high in that case the Coulomb's law may not be applicable and the metal adheres to the tool phase resulting in some type of sticking friction condition metal may adhere on this phase and other layer top layer may you know that slightly slide on this one. It is not that entire metal has adhered then of course, it will not be able to move also, but this layer is of course, may get stuck and other layers on the top may move also. So, from C to D where the chip curls in this there is a chip curling uh, means it adopts this type of shape you can see that some amount of curling 
here it is not shown, but we, we may have that this type of culling. So, chip may cull here and this one is from C to D where the chip culls smaller normal stress values are obtained giving the usual sliding friction condition. So, this is normal stress and shear stress on leg phase that has been shown. Now, uh, usually it is not only in the case of metal cutting, but even in metal farming also this phenomena will be there that Coulomb's coefficient of friction uh, may not be applicable, it may not be constant. So, what happens Coulomb's law is not valid. Coulomb's law says that the friction force does not depend on the area, but this may no longer be correct, it may depend on the area also. So, it is here that if we show variation of friction force with normal force, any general normal force is there and then we generate frictional force. So, if the normal force is very small, then the friction force is also small. So, in this particular region more or less Coulomb's law is followed that means friction force is proportional to the normal force and here this slope is basically mu friction force divided by normal force is mu which is called the coefficient of friction. This you know very well in most of the engineering mechanics problems you have been taking constant Coulomb coefficient of friction. In this region uh, basically the real area of contact is actually very very small compared to this one. It should not be said that 0, but it may be very very small may be 0 0.02 or even smaller than that. See a real area means suppose surfaces are not smooth. So, if there is some object which is moving with velocity uh, v, it may be moving here in this direction horizontal direction as shown and I am also applying the normal load on that, then there is a area A that is this nominal area that is apparent area which is appearing to us we are seeing that, but in practice uh, the surface is not smooth. So, what is happening that this area is rough this is you are seeing that this is rough and it is making contact at certain points mostly asperities where those are projections high points and these cumulative are denoted by A r. So, initially A r is very uh, small compared to A. So, really it is very small. So, what is happening that if I increase the load in that case my A r will also keep increasing A r will increase in that proportion and since A r will increase so similarly in that proportion your shear stress will also increase that is why normal stress will appear to be proportional to the shear stress. And you say that friction force is not depending on the contact area not depending on the contact area means it is not depending on the area A which is you are seeing by your eyes, but actually it is depending what in the beginning they if there is a no contact area suppose A r is 0 then there is a no place to shear and therefore friction force will of course be 0 that is why when the normal force is 0 then the friction force is 0, but once there is a contact getting established that means there is A r that means these surfaces then offer the resistance and therefore, you will get friction here. So, that uh, will be manifested here. So, this type of thing keeps happening. So, that is the reason that in the you are getting that friction force is actually increasing with respect to the normal force and if I apply the load. So, there may come one point that when it has made the contact fully and in that case may be A r is equal to A entire surface is in contact expertise have deformed. In that case now if I further increase the load in that case because entire area is already in touch 
and they will pose um, uh, that area can offer some resistance na, for CL deformation or CL uh, depending and there may be CL strength of the material. So, depending uh, you know that how much force is needed to break the bond. So, if A R has already become equal to A, there is no scope to increase the friction force and in that case the friction becomes constant. So, therefore, A R by A is equal to A. In between there may be some transition area because this abrupt change will not be there that up to this there is a Coulomb coefficient and after that suddenly it becomes a constant uh, CL stress theory that is not correct. In fact, there will be gradual transition. Gradual transition will be there actually the things are very complicated people are doing this type of research this itself is a research area a spaghetti based model of the uh, friction is usually taken and then people do lot of studies these expertise are deforming in a elastic manner also they are deforming in the plastic manner. So, elastoplastic deformation what is the effect of various things and chemical aspects all these have to be considered in detail, but phenomenologically we are observing this type of behavior that I have shown here. So, friction force actually is uh, very small and follows the Coulomb's law if the normal force is less and if the normal force is high then it becomes the constant um, friction condition. So, that is why you are getting this type of distribution, but right now I have done merchants analysis right now we are not going to model the stresses in this manner. Okay. Later on you know based on some research papers and you can actually do very detailed analysis and you can study further. Here so Coulomb's model can be stated as T s is equal to f time T n where f is the coefficient of friction, but provided f times T n that means that total shear stress is somewhat smaller than sigma e q by root 3. What is sigma e q that means equivalent stress in tension that means may be that I can write it sigma y if I am not considering the temperature and strain rate effect. So, sigma y by root 3 that means maximum CL yield stress. So, as long as the yielding of the surface is not taking place, assumption is that you cannot increase the CL stress on the surface beyond its yield CL stress. So, F T n is smaller or equal to sigma E q by under root 3 this one and T s is equal to sigma E e q by under root 3 for F T n greater than sigma E q by root 3. So, T s and T n are tangential and normal component of the stress vector we call stress vector that means unit is Newton per meter square only, but when we talk about the stress on a particular plane getting specified then we can say it as a vector also and f is the coefficient of friction the tangential or frictional stress components acting on the work piece is in the opposite direction to that of its relative motion uh, this one of tools or whatever die. Avijul has worked a lot in metal farming he used a friction factor to model the interface friction in his model the tangential stress component is expressed as a fraction of its maximum value. That means, we he does not use the Coulomb coefficient of friction he uses that T s is equal to m times sigma e q by root 3. So, you know that the maximum possible friction stress is sigma e q by root 3, but here you have T s is equal to m sigma e q by root 3. So, here it is uh, this fraction m is called friction factor that means for lubricated surface m may be 0.1 or even may be smaller this type of model can also be used. Veniham and Bay has modeled based on the strip line field theory and he has shown this type of arrangement T n by sigma y sigma y is the yield strength non dimensionalized way we have plotted the normal stress and this is the CL stress portion here and 
we, we are getting this type of curves. So, suppose m is equal to 1, in that case constant stress is all, uh, uh, of course becomes equal to T s by sigma uh, y by this one root 3 is equal to 1. So, that means uh, 1 by root 3 is actually 0.577. So, this quantity is actually 0.577 ok that is 0.577 and here you are having different values of m. So, what he did that the same thing that here he included a transition region that means there is a zone in which the Coulomb's coefficient uh, can be used Coulomb's friction rise valid and after that there is a zone of constant friction and in between there is a transition zone and this is plotted for different values of m and these can be approximated by the different this one here T n prime is the limit of proportionality that up to which the Coulomb's law hold goods and uh, this is uh, T n is greater than T n prime. T s prime and T n prime are the values of the tangential and normal stress components at the proportionality limit. He also derived that T s prime by sigma y is equal to this much and T n prime is also given here. These e expressions are for perfect free plastic material that means we assume that the material remains rigid and after certain point it becomes a uh, plastic all of a sudden that is rigid and there is no strain hardening. So, to make them applicable to strain hardening material sigma e q in these equations can be replaced by the equivalent stress that means sigma y also I can use that uh, other expression which is dependent on the strain hardening. Similarly, sigma y may be dependent on the temperature also. So, for the Winniham and Bay friction model the friction boundary conditions are T s is equal to F T n this is up to the proportionality limit that is if T n is less than some threshold value that is T n prime and T s is equal to F star T n for transition region this F star is now not a constant and T s is equal to m sigma e q by root 3 beyond the transition region. T s star can be expressed in this manner F star is equal to this one F star basically. So, that means the if we are in this region then the Coulomb's coefficient of friction equivalent Coulomb's coefficient of friction is in fact dependent on what is the amount of the normal uh, stress T n. So, that is why this expression is dependent like this it is a function of T n. Beyond the transition range the friction boundary condition is expressed in terms of the friction factor m the equivalent coefficient of friction can be obtained like that. This is equivalent Coulomb's coefficient of friction if I know some m then I can know that equivalently at low normal stress what would have been uh, Coulomb's coefficient of friction. So, this relation is already there that is what we have to that was the Winniham and Bay model which also has been used. Often in uh, metal cutting we use velocity dependent friction model. Here we say that the friction force reduces with increasing velocity Maybe with increasing velocity the temperature also becomes high and material softens a bit. So, F is equal to F 0 V C P. So, material softening takes place at high velocity at the same time there may not be enough time for making a contact or, or, or welding of the micro welding of two surfaces because in the both the surfaces they are always spirit is they may not get properly welded. So, whatever is the reason there may be various factors, but the it has been observed that as the velocity increases or cutting speed increases then the coefficient of friction basically decreases. So, if I consider that F has the coefficient of friction then F is equal to F 0 V C P, P is actually negative may be minus 0.07 or whatever is that thing friction angle is equal to tan inverse 
f. So, having told you about the friction, now let us try to calculate the stresses and strain and strain rate using the experimental values of high f c and f t. You know that how I can calculate f c and f t, f c and f t can be measured by dynamometer also cutting tool dynamometer can be fixed on the machine on which the tool can be mounted and on that you can find out the cutting force and thrust force and then you can also obtain the shear angle by photograph by experimental method or suppose you know rake angle and friction angle if you have idea then you can find out phi by that relation which uh, combines friction angle and um, shear angle and rake angle. So, suppose we know phi and we know f c and f t in that case we can obtain the shear stress on the shear plane. So, shear stress is actually f, f s divided by a s this is a s uh, that area of the shear plane a c is the shear plane and f s is equal to f c cos phi minus f t sin phi this comes from the merchant's relation and divided by this will be shear stress it will be b a s will be b multiplied by t by sin phi. So, this sin phi goes up this a c length is what a c length is basically t by sin phi b is the width of the chip if you say b is the width of the chip. So, this is like that and normal some books may use b as a w. So, be careful because you are reading 2 3 books. So, you have to be careful b can be called w also here in this figure this is b and this one is there. So, here what is it indicating that shear stress of course, the shear stress increases if f c is more and if f t is more then it is decreasing it is also dependent on phi and it is dependent on b and t and then the normal stress is sigma that is f n by a s that is f c sin phi plus f t cos phi divided by b t into sin phi b and t b is the width and t is the thickness of the uncut chip actually this length of the a c a c is equal to t by sin phi t by sin phi that is how that this is coming here that is why t is in the uh, denominator and then phi goes sin phi goes up. So, this you have seen and uh, you can find out the shear stress and normal stress on the shear plane. Now, let us talk about the shear strain. You know what is a shear strain? Suppose we have at a point we make a very small this type of rectangular A, B, C, D and then slightly deform this rectangular so that this line A, B becomes A, B dash and maybe C, D has become uh, uh, C, C prime D like that. So, there is only deformation we are not stretching it and there is a change in the angle. So, here this angle was 90 degree now this angle has slightly reduced. So, angle between a b prime and a d is less than 90 degree and since the angle is reducing by convention we call it a positive shear. So, let us say that b b dash is delta s and a b is delta y then delta s by delta y that will be shear angle. So, shear strain will be shear offset delta s divided by perpendicular distance between shear plane. Same concept we apply here suppose there is a tool I am uh, doing machining may be some material was like this. C B B prime A C this was the part of the work piece and then the tool has penetrated tool has come up to point A. Then this B prime must have gone to B because that is what it is making this one and from here it is going up. So, that is what this one you are seeing the work piece because this one 
दिस दिस पोर्सन हैज गान अप बी प्राइम हैज गान बी एंड दिस बी इट सेल्फ हैज मूवड अहेड सो दिस सी बी हैज बिकम सी बी हियर एंड दिस इज बी प्राइम एंड दिस वन सो फाइव इज दिस वन सो हाउ मच वी वी आर डिस्प्लेसिंग वी आर डिस्प्लेसिंग द मटीरियल फ्रॉम बी प्राइम टू बी एंड फ्रॉम ए वी कैन ड्रॉप ए परपेंडिकुलर एंड वी कैन सी वॉट इज द परपेंडिकुलर डिस्टेंस मीन्स वॉट इज डेल्टा वाई सो वी कैन से बी प्राइम बी डिवाइडेड बाई ए पी दिस इज ए पी दैट कैन बी रिटर्न एज बी प्राइम पी पी इज द बेसिकली फुट ऑफ द परपेंडिकुलर एंड दिस इज बी प्राइम पी प्लस पी बी डिवाइडेड बाई ए पी दिस विल बिकम इक्वल टू बी प्राइम पी डिवाइडेड बाई ए पी प्लस पी बी बाई ए पी नाउ फ्रॉम दिस फिगर यू कैन वेरी नाइसली सी दैट बी प्राइम पी इज एक्चुअली बी प्राइम पी बाई ए पी इज एक्चुअली काट फाइ एंड दिस वन इज एक्चुअली टेन फाइव माइनस एल्फा वाई दिस बिकॉज ए बी लाइन दिस ए बी लाइन इज इन फैक्ट मेकिंग एन एंगल एल्फा विद द वर्टिकल एंड दिस परपेंडिकुलर विल मेक फाइ फ्रॉम द वर्टिकल सो दिस एंगल बिकम्स फाइ माइनस एल्फा सो यू गेट ए नाइस एक्सप्रेशन सी एल स्ट्रेन गामा इज इकल टू काट फाइ प्लस टाइन टाइन फाइ माइनस एल्फा यू कैन वेरी वेल सी दैट इफ एल्फा इंक्रीजेज देन द टाइन फाइव माइनस एल्फा इज गोइंग टू रिड्यूस एंड देयर फोर सी एल स्ट्रेन इज गोइंग टू रिड्यूस दैट इज वाई ए लार्ज रेक एंगल इज बेनिफिशियल इट इज गिविंग यू लेस अमाउंट ऑफ सी एल स्ट्रेन बिकॉज वी डोंट वॉन्ट दैट मच सी एल स्ट्रेन ऑल्सो वी जस्ट वॉन्ट टू सेपरेट द चिप सो एल्फा इफेक्ट इज क्लियरली सीन एज फार एज द फाइ इज कंसर्न डच सी एल स्ट्रेन इंक्रीज विथ फाइ आर डिक्रीज वी कैन सी दैट टेन फाइ पार्ट सेकेंड पार्ट इज इंक्रीजिंग बट द फर्स्ट पार्ट इज डिक्रीजिंग विथ इंक्रीज इन फाइव सो दैट मीन्स देयर मस्ट बी सम ऑप्टिमम फाइ एट विच दि सी एल स्ट्रेन मे बी मिनिमम सो दैट इज वॉट बट दिस रिलेशन यू कैन ऑलवेज रिमेंबर दैट गामा इज इकल टू काट फाइ प्लस टेन फाइव माइनस एल्फा नाउ हियर तो सी एल स्ट्रेन कैन ऑल्सो बी एक्सप्रेस्ड इन टर्म्स ऑफ द चिप कंप्रेशन रेशियो आई डिफाइन द कटिंग रेशियो कटिंग रेशियो इज टी वन बाई टी टू चिप कंप्रेशन रेशियो इज एग्जेक्टली रिवर्स ऑफ दैट सो दिस इज डिफाइंड एज टी टू बाई टी वन कटिंग रेशियो इज ऑलवेज लेस दैन वन चिप कंप्रेशन रेशियो इज एक्चुअली मोर दैन वन एंड सी एल स्ट्रेन कैन बी एक्सप्रेस्ड एज ए फंक्शन ऑफ चिप कंप्रेशन रेशियो एंड रे कैंगल एल्फा बिकॉज फाइ इज ऑल्सो डिपेंडेंट ऑन चिप कंप्रेशन रेशियो एंड रे कैंगल सो दिस यू कैन वेरी इजीली डिलाइव बिकॉज यू हैव ऑलरेडी दैट रिलेशन यू ऑलरेडी नो दैट टाइप ऑफ कटिंग रेशियो रिलेशन दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी शोन सो वी विल बी शोइंग इन द प्रीवियस राइट वी हैव ऑलरेडी शोन सो सी आर स्ट्रेन गामा यू कैन एक्सप्रेस एज वन माइनस टू टाओ साइन एल्फा प्लस टाओ स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाई टाओ का सेल्फा दिस इज शोइंग हियर इन दिस केस सी एल स्ट्रेन इज एक्सप्रेस लाइक दिस दिस डेरीवेशन यू कैन योर सेल्फ डू हियर दैट वन आउट लाइन इज गिवेन सपोज गामा इज इकल टू काट फाइव प्लस टेन फाइव माइनस एल्फा काट फाइव यू राइट एज वन बाई टेन फाइव एंड देन दिस यू एक्सप्रेस टेन फाइव पोर्सन दैट सी एल एंगल एंगल इन टर्म्स ऑफ दी चिप कंप्रेशन रेशियो एंड रे का एंगल लाइक दैट यू एक्सप्रेस एंड इफ यू डू सम मैनुपलेशन देन आफ्टर दैट यू गेट दिस एक्सप्रेशन गामा इज इकल टू वन माइनस टू टाओ साइन एल्फा प्लस टाओ स्क्वायर एंड दिस इज टाओ स्क्वायर का सेल्फा दिस सिंबल इज एक्चुअली कैन बी कॉल जीटा ओके दिस इज जीटा इक्वल टू टी टू बाई टी वन दिस इज जी एंड दिस इज वन माइनस टू जीटा साइन एल्फा प्लस जीटा स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाई जीटा का सेल्फा दैट इज सी एल स्ट्रेन गामा नाउ सी एल स्ट्रेन रेट इज गिवेन बाई डेल्टा एस बाई डेल्टा वाई डिवाइडेड बाई डेल्टा टी दैट हाउ मच इज द टाइम रिक्वायर्ड फॉर द मेटल टू ट्रेवल दैट पर्टिकुलर डिस्टेंस डेल्टा एस The metal has no doubt come from here to here, but how much distance time it has taken 
that point has to be known and to uh, the distance delta is along the CL plane, delta y is the distance between two successive CL planes that we can take. A reasonable value of spacing between successive plane would be about 25 into 10 to the power minus 4 mm that type of thing can be done. So, uh, that you can actually have there may be uh, different type of uh, this one 10 to the power minus 3 mm means 1 micron. So, uh, we can have about uh, you may have say 25 micron there is lot of people have given different different ranges and uh, there is uh, this one, but you can take any typical value say in this case it is mentioned that 25 input into the power minus 4 mm strain rate in machining is usually very high if we calculate like that it is of the order of 10 to the power 5 per second compared to typical strain rate values of 10 to the power minus 3 per second for tensile test and generally in impact test we get the it is of the order of 10 to the power 3 per second for impact test. This value really delta y is actually this much or it is different this r is debatable sometimes people have taken some uh, photographs and you can find out from using scanning electron microscopy and transmission electron microscopy you can get some idea and research can still go on in that direction but we have just taken some ad hoc value here and then we are estimating that CL strain rate. Now from the velocity relationship diagram suppose we go to the velocity relationship that suppose it is V and then there is a chip is moving here uh, chip may be sliding up. So, V s is shown up job is moving with a velocity V and this is V c V c is the chip velocity we call it chip velocity we can make a triangle triangle because these are vectors. So, suppose V is the work piece on which there is a chip which is sliding with V s. So, I have from here I can take this one and this is the absolute velocity of chip that will be called V c. This is the V, V is the velocity of the work piece on the work piece itself the chip is moving with a relative velocity V s. So, I have drawn it here and therefore, and after that we have drawn a b and this a b is the absolute velocity it is in the direction of uh, rake surface. So, this angle is alpha and this angle is no doubt it is phi because V s is in this direction. So, in that case this angle comes out to be phi minus alpha if you drop a perpendicular here and uh, now we can find out from this triangle that we can apply the sin law and we can say chip velocity V c is basically uh, V c by sin phi this divided by this and V s this is V divided by that angle. So, this relation comes out to be V sin phi divided by cos phi minus alpha right. So, V sin phi divided by cos phi minus alpha if V increases V c also increases if phi increases then also V c increases and C l velocity V s from this diagram itself I can find out V s is equal to V cos alpha V divided by um, V s divided by this 90 minus alpha sin 90 minus alpha sin la will give me that. So, you get V cos alpha e divided by cos phi minus alpha. So, we have got chip velocity, we have got C l velocity, then the C l strain rate can be given as gamma dot is equal to V s divided by delta y and this can be written as cos alpha divided by cos phi minus alpha V divided by delta y. But this delta y we have to make some assumption delta y is not known very precisely. So, that is what we have to make some assumption and this is what we have written here like this. From the continuity of mass V t 1 is equal to V c t 2 
that also we can do in the width direction the chip is not spreading. So, we get V T 1 is equal to V C T 2 like that and then R is equal to that is cutting ratio is T 1 by T 2. So, cutting ratio is basically nothing but V C by V, V C is the chip velocity and V is the cutting velocity at most the cutting uh, velocity can be equal to 1. So, V C can at most be equal to V. Relationship between rake angle alpha shear angle phi and chip thickness ratio R that is already known to you R is equal to T 1 by T 2 and this is A c sin phi divided by A c cos phi minus alpha from he this figure. So, by solving we had got tan phi is equal to R cos alpha divided by 1 minus R sin alpha. So, if you know relationship between rake angle and shear angle and suppose you have measured of course, if you have measured the chip thickness ratio, you can estimate phi and you can also estimate V c. And then this is about this one that how do you find out uh, this one stress and if you want to find out stresses on the work piece uh, or, um, rather on the tool, then in that case you have to take that forces coming on the tool that we know f and n and divide by that particular contact area which can also be easily obtained you can have, but you have to consider that what is the chip contact length means how much will be up to which point the chip will be in contact. It need not be in the contact up to this point it may go beyond and you can estimate in the average way. Now, I am going to discuss you one interesting paper by Victor P. Stho that was published in International Journal of Mechanical Sciences in volume 47 issue 11 in 2005 and it is about a 23 page paper in that he has discussed in detail that shear single shear plane model is not really adequate in the modeling of the metal cutting process. So, major drawbacks of the single shear plane model have been discussed by Astko in these manners in finite strain rate that means a particle of the layer being removed should be subjected to infinite deacceleration on passing the shear plane because its velocity changes instantly from V into V c. You know that V c is smaller than V because V into T is T 1 is equal to V c into T 2 and T 2 is always greater than T 1. So, V c must be always less than V. So, that means the velocity is changing, but it is changing all of a sudden this model assumes that is why from V to V c you have come suddenly. So, naturally the if you start calculating the deacceleration that will come out to be infinite that is one point r is equal to t 1 by t 2 v c by v that is this one and then unrealistically high shear strain and shear strain rates are predicted by this model as to feels that the strain rate may not be actually that high it may be only of the order of 10 per second, but these theories they predict 10 to the power 5 etcetera. Calculated shear strain or shear strain rate in metal cutting is much greater than the strain at fracture achieved in the mechanical testing of materials under various conditions. I give one example suppose I take alpha is equal to 0 degree, phi I take 20 degree and V is equal to 0.5 meter per second that means 30 meter per minute. Then shear strain rate is cos alpha V divided by cos phi minus alpha into delta y put these values alpha rake angle is 0 after putting these values and delta y I have put 25 into 10 to the power minus 7 meter then I am getting 2 into 10 to the power 5 per second 2.12 into 10 to the power 5 per second. However, typical strain rate values for tensile test is 10 to the power minus 3 per second and for impact test it is 10 to the power 3 per second. So, these values are much higher and unrealistic behavior of the work material. Rigid perfectly plastic work material is assumed which is not the case in practice because we assume that it is rigid perfectly plastic 
but that may not be true. Improper accounting for the resistance of the work material to cut the shear strength or the flow stress cannot be considered as an adequate characteristic in this respect because stress does not account for the energy spent in cutting. Okay. So, it is uh, there may be lot of other factors that is another drawback here unrealistic representation of the tool work piece contact the cutting edge is perfectly sharp we assume and no contact takes place on the tool frank surface this is this is in obvious contradiction with the practice of machining where the frank wheel due to the tool frank work piece contact is a common criteria of tool life that means there is some amount of the frank wheel on the frank surface there will be contact this is basically this surface is the frank surface here some contact is there but you know merchants model or single shear plane model is not taking into account that thing and then inapplicability of for cutting brittle work materials model is not applicable for the case of cutting of brittle materials this exhibits no or very little plastic deformation by shear a brittle material does not exhibit plastic deformation by shear but here whole basis is that there is a shear taking place so therefore this model may not be adequate for the uh, cutting of the brittle material although at certain conditions brittle materials may behave in a ductile fashion also in some cases we call that thing a ductile regime machining but that we are not going to discuss here. Nevertheless, the single shear plane model is still applied to model the machining of grey cast iron that also then cryogenic tool uh, type of supported na, in which we use uh, cryogenic uh, cutting that means uh, we may put some liquid nitrogen in the cutting zone so that the temperature goes in the negative that time the behavior of the material may become brittle but even then we use this model in such type of circumstances also. And then Astro pointed out that Ernest and Merchant introduced some drawbacks in the velocity diagram because Merchant modeled the velocity diagram like this. In this case he assumed that the tool is moving with velocity v and in that case v s is equal to v plus v s. But if we take the equivalent model, in that case this minus V s will be equal to V minus V s. So, it is depending on that type of thing that whether means one has to consider that what is the velocity relation. So, there are some problems with the velocity diagram also means uh, if I have taken in the earlier case mostly in the analysis I always talk about tool at the stationary and the chip velocity becomes the absolute velocity. But if the tool is moving then what I will be defining as the chip velocity will it be the relative velocity of the chip on the tool surface or will it be the absolute velocity of the chip all these type of things nobody discusses much that uh, point is there. So, Black collected the diagram like this Black has this made this type of diagram black paper is also there although this collected velocity diagram solves the sign problem, but uh, in this diagram also there is a some problem because shear force and V s both are in opposite direction. Then there are some other authors they propose another type of velocity diagram. Now this is uh, in direct contradiction with simple observations of the chip formation because chip is going up where this chip moves from the chip formation zone. So, these are some problems in the velocity diagram also, but in most of your analysis and in your books we are just taking the case of tool is stationary and we are making one type of velocity diagram, but you must be aware about the counterpoints. Moreover, uh, when the chip compression ratio uh, is 1. Suppose chip compression ratio is 1 that is T 1 is equal to T 2. Actually there should not be any plastic deformation in metal cutting it is just rotation type of thing 
but you are calculating the shear strain using this formula then you will still be getting some shear strain because this formula is 1 minus 2 tau sin alpha plus tau square by tau cos alpha. So, put tau uh, sorry uh, it is it should be called zeta and this is what zeta is this one it remains very really significant. So, when for example, when zeta equal to 1 and alpha is equal to minus 10 degree if I put this value then I will be getting shear strain as 2.38 and when I put uh, zeta equal to 1 and alpha is equal to 0 degree then I am getting shear strain gamma is equal to 2 and when zeta equal to 1 and alpha is equal to 10 degree then I am getting shear strain equal to 1.68. So, for um, 0 rake angle you are getting shear strain equal to 2 when this zeta is equal to 1. So, that means this is the minimum amount of shear strain you are expecting from this model although actually that may not be the shear strain it may be due, due to rotation chip may rotate, but rotation does not mean the shear. Na. So, this, this uh, severe physical contradiction cannot be solved with the existing velocity diagram. One thing we can of course observe that here if alpha is increasing from minus 10 degree to 10 degree then the shear strain is decreasing. Okay. Now, uh, as Tho pointed out that the diagram is also incorrect force diagram uh, because coefficient of friction is actually given as mu is equal to tan lambda that is f by n that is f by c t which is appearing contact area n by this one a c t shear stress by normal stress, but you get basically this is a coulomb coefficient is assumed as a constant but for sticking friction tau is equal to sigma f that means flow stress is sigma f with one misses criteria the coefficient of friction under sticking condition is mu is equal to sigma f by sigma 0. Sigma 0 may be the yield stress and sigma f is the shear stress that is sigma 0 by root 3. So, it comes out to be 0 0.577. So, this becomes a this one if if mu is greater than 0 0.577 then no relative motion can occur at interface that is the point and however in experimental studies Zorro obtained Zorro obtained mu in the range of 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 means this is the average coefficient came out to be 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 because of these type of problems and uh, because we are not able to monitor proper variation of the coefficient of uh, friction and Cronenberg uh, obtained mu in the range of 0 0.77 to 1.46 also. So, normally we say that mu should not exceed 0 0.577, but here they are obtaining very high value. Usui and uh, Takeyama obtained mu in the range of 0 0.42 to 2. As the normal stress is much greater than the frictional stress the line of in reaction may not even intersect the actual shear plane that is also another effect and these uh, and these forces are acting far away from this they may produce chip curling chip curling is not pointed uh, uh, means taken into account here merchant shifted the resultant cutting force r prime parallel to itself you just see if you compare the figures that here he is making that actually the forces are acting here, but in the merchant circuit diagram they are shown here in this one at the tool point he is considering this as a tool tip. So, here uh, it is uh, uh, bending moment due to the parallel shift of the resultant cutting force has not been taken. This missed mo com uh, moment component is the prime cause for chip formation and thus it dis distinguishes the cutting process among other deforming processes that has been taken this one and naturally the constant friction coefficient has been taken if the friction coefficient is constant over the tool chip interface as assumed by merchant and subsequent researchers 
then the distribution of the normal and shear stress should be equidistant over this interface that is the shapes of the normal and shear stress distribution over the tool chip interface should be the same, but that is not true. I already have shown that how these shapes uh, look you have already seen here this I can show you again that you are seeing that shape of normal stress distribution is this and shape of shear distribution is this, but naturally this cannot be taken into account by simple merchant analysis. These are the problems associated with this model. Uh, so, uh, then uh, it is uh, yes in this case we have taken the available theoretical and experimental data do not support this assumption. So, Astko has pointed out that there were other people much before the merchant also they had proposed other models also like Briggs model around 1896 it was proposed in which he proposed this type of model that there is a shear taking place along A0 then A1 this is A2 and An. So, here gradually the shear angle is increasing and there is no abrupt increase in the stress and strain this model was taken, but people have not believed that model. In fact, Joleo presented another type of model in which he assumed the curved line these are the shear lines they are having some curvature he qualitatively he told about this model he simplified this ultimately again and he said that let this curved portion should be taken as a straight line then he is getting this type of model here and uh, this and this may be that he has taken some representative value of this one that shear angle ultimately it boils down to single shear plane model and uh, this one. So, these are the problems that you know earlier time has discussed about this one um, in uh, 18, 19th century something about single shear plane model. Then uh, other researchers like Birik and uh, Joleo, Brick and Joleo they also had discussed then after that, but ultimately again we took the single shear plane model later on some researchers have told about the shear zone model also, but merchants model is still actually being taught in most of the colleges and in most of the textbook this model is included because it may be easy to teach properly. So, this I have shown you that paper and uh, now let us see some questions related to this. So, that during orthogonal machining with a zero rake angle the shear strain is given by gamma is equal to 1 plus r square by r this you can derive just you have to put the expression r is the ratio of undeformed chip thickness to chip thickness if the rake angle is not zero what is the expression for shear strain this you can practice. Another question is this in a straight turning operation feed is 0.2 mm per revolution depth of cut is 2 mm, work piece diameter is 20 mm and spindle rpm is 600. If the cutting ratio that ratio of uncut chip to chip thickness is 0 0.5, the chip thickness is how much? So, straight turning means there is side cutting edge angle is 0. So, it is cutting like this. In that case, as we have already understood that the chip thickness in this case uh, is 0.5 times the uncut chip thickness and uncut chip, chip thickness uh, uncut chip thickness will be equal to feed 0.2. So, therefore, 0.2 and uh, divided by 0 0.5 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.5 this will be how much it will be 0 0.4. So, therefore, it will be 0 0.4 mm that is this one. So, this option will be correct 0.4 mm this one. Do not confuse it with the depth of cut, depth of cut will give the width of the chip. Now, here depth of cut will give the width of the chip. So, this in this actually I have discussed let us just summarize that what we have discussed. We have discussed about the strains and stresses in orthogonal cutting, but we discussed 
in the average sense. So, in this case we have considered merchant's forces then divided by the area. I discussed the difficulties means we have not obtained much quantitative expressions, but we discussed the difficulties uh, in the simple merchant's model like friction behavior etcetera in merchant's model uh, friction is not taken as a function of the velocity, but you can that that portion can be easily taken you can always do that, but of course he uh, assumes that constant coefficient of friction. So, here I am calculating the shear stress and normal stress on these planes and similarly we can find out the stresses average stresses on the tool surface also if you get uh, idea about the tool chip contact length and uh, then these expressions we have derived and mostly then we have discussed that what are the difficulties in the single shear plane model of the merchant. This paper is very interesting this you can read in International Journal of Mechanical Sciences volume 47 this paper of Victor P. Astakho here he has discussed the drawbacks of the single shear plane model which will be which provides hindrance. Nowadays we can model the machining process by finite element method also. In this course we will not be, be discussing about the finite element ma, uh, model, but in the finite element model we can find out stress and strain distribution. We can obtain the stress controls also and we can do much detailed analysis. In that case many things we can reveal, but computationally it will take huge amount of time. So, we have done we if we do the finite element analysis then maybe by analysis itself we can get somewhat this type of zone we can observe that in this zone there will be plastic deformation. If we do photographic techniques etcetera and if we make a grid pattern and we find out experimentally then also we can observe uh, this type of zone we will discuss some of these experimental techniques in the next lecture. So, Briggs model then similarly Joleus model is there and then after that Joleus simplified model is there and uh, then you can solve some problems of this one and finally, last point just I am trying to show you that suppose uh, we take expression for shear strain as tan phi minus alpha plus cot phi. Now, if alpha is 0, rake angle is 0, then expression becomes very simple. You can remember also that it becomes tan phi plus cot phi, right. Now, we want to find out that which shear angle will give me minimum strain. So, we just give d gamma by d uh, d is phi which will give me minimum I am interested. If you talk which will give me maximum I can do it by observation also at phi equal to 0 cot phi will become infinite at phi equal to 90 also gamma will become infinite because tan phi. So, if we do like that so then what do we get? We get sec square phi minus cosec square phi that means 1 by cos square phi minus sin square phi. So, cos phi becomes sin phi. So, that means phi is equal to 45 degree. So, at phi is equal to 45 degree tan phi becomes 1 and cot phi becomes 1. So, gamma becomes 1. So, these type of simple exercises you can do in order to become familiar. So, uh, in the next lecture we will discuss more about uh, the uh, stresses and strain and also some experimental methods. Thank you.